reporting gives insight into the technology trends of tomorrow. Wired's Daniel Oberhaus talks about post-pandemic energy innovation and what that means for carbon emissions. Takeout from Le Diplomat is on tap for this special episode of Off the Menu with Monica at Home. Energy has been such a big story throughout the pandemic, and obviously carbon emissions have been contracting. That's a huge story. Uh, but the bigger question is, where will carbon emissions go next? It's expected that they will rise. What do you think some of the technologies are that we need to see come into play in order to get to a place where we're keeping emissions down? The big answer there is we need to go um, fully towards carbon neutral um, or car carbon uh, negative technologies. So not only you know solar, wind, and uh, nuclear, of course, but also uh, we need to start thinking about uh, technology that can also remove carbon from the air, so carbon capture and storage. There's a lot of innovation happening in these spaces as well. Um, whether or not that'll actually end up happening, I'm a bit skeptical of myself. You know, uh, I think, if anything, the pandemic's kind of shown just how much we need to do in order to hit our climate goals. There's a big lobby that backs, uh, you know, dirty energy and um, it's in their interest to, to kind of maintain ground, um, which they've also experienced a major shock. They're, you know, oil has seen three shocks in 12 years, but nothing quite like this would, where you have demand collapsing at the same time as a supply side shock. The conversation on climate and energy um, seems to has, have shifted a bit as a result of the pandemic. Do you think that it's a permanent shift or will we go back to a lot of the same debates that we were seeing before um, pre-pandemic? I think this really underscores just how much we need to do in a sustainable way. Obviously we can't have everyone stay home. No one wants to do that. So I think it's probably gonna make people be like, well, we do need to really start rethinking what it means to adopt uh, green energy on a massive scale. Problem is, it's not just oil getting hurt by this. The renewable energy industry is also having a hard time. Um, it's exposed the vulnerability of supply chains. We're really dependent on China for solar cells, um, for batteries, for grid storage. So, you know, they, they might not be hurting as bad as oil, but um, standing these things back up all the way from the lithium mines in South America to the battery production facilities in China is going to be very, very challenging. You cover technology and innovation. When you think ahead, um so the next few years uh, and even beyond, what are the technologies that get you most excited? I think anyone who watches this would laugh when I say this, but I am really excited about hydrogen. This technology is accelerating very, very fast and our ability to create green hydrogen is accelerating very, very fast. So that I'm incredibly excited about. And the other technology that I'm really excited about are all these um, high temperature uh, nuclear reactors that are coming out. Just not only for what they can do for revitalizing the nuclear industry, but also their kind of ancillary effects. Um, and so I'm thinking about the ability to use um, high temperature nuclear reactors that have these small um, geographic footprints for um, industrial processes. And I, I think that can just really change the game in terms of uh, if we're talking about reducing CO2, not only is there a lot of innovation happening, but you know, there's a sense of urgency to it. And you know, it's something I try to communicate with my work. And I think a lot of people on this beat do as well is that you know, it's, it's nice to talk about cool tech, but like it's cool tech with a purpose and a very, very urgent one. What's it been like uh, reporting during the pandemic? I imagine that you've had to change the way that you work. So it hasn't changed that much for me. I've been really fortunate that a lot of the people working in uh, uh, the energy industry have been really responsive. The energy industry has just really shown that it can shine even in the worst circumstances. I had the opportunity to speak with the people at Palo Verde when they were refueling last month. Um, which as I'm sure everyone watching this podcast is aware, like they, uh, you know, this is a process that requires hundreds of people to come in um, from all around the country, all these contractors. So it's really not an ideal thing to be doing in the middle of a pandemic, but they had their protocols in place. They knew exactly how to handle this. They could do it with a skeleton crew. Um, and, you know, it was just, it was great to hear that uh, the biggest power plant in the U S was, or the biggest nuclear power plant is, um, you know, just, it's going to handle it just fine. You and I are both, um, eating burgers or we're talking a lot. So we should be eating more. Um, I got, I'm in Washington, DC. I got my burger from Le Diplomat. The next time you're in town, you should absolutely go to Le Diplomat. It's a great burger. But where did you get your burger and fries from? You told me you're in, um, in Bushwick. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I went to, there's a place called The Wheelhouse um, around the corner from me, and they're just a, a, you know, a solid burger spot. I'm vegetarian, so it makes it a bit more challenging um, to find a good burger place, but they have Impossible Burgers, which I just adore. Um, and so they, they actually know how to make them. Most people, like, most people cook them like a regular burger, and they just end up dried out, but like, you really just need to flash, flash cook them, and they actually, they know how to do it. <laughs> this was great. It was fun. Thank you for doing this and taking the time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, it was. Uh, thank you for having me. And uh, you know, next time I'm in DC, I will uh, drop you and Mary a line. I would love to, you know, get a drink in person or something. And yeah, we should absolutely grab a drink. Yeah, touch elbows or whatever is socially acceptable at that point. <laughs>